all those bankruptcies in the solar industry. How does this affect you? Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Not much has changed, but the solar industry has definitely been going through some rough times these past two years. Today, we will talk about a subject matter not talked about by pretty much anyone here on YouTube. And I think it's extremely important, if not most important, for those with a solar system or thinking about it. You've probably seen some of my fellow YouTube friends like Joe Ordia, Zach Solar, or Jack the Solar Guy talking about all those bankruptcies in the solar industry. Major installers like SunPower closed their doors, Titan Solar, Texas Solar. This is causing manufacturers to suffer as well. Solar Edge might be barely holding on. So many small businesses have gone under over the past two years as well. It's actually pretty depressing. I myself am running an installation company here in DFW area, so I know the struggles myself. But you know me, or maybe you don't, at least not yet. I do hope you'll stick around to find out. But I am a very positive person, and I always try to look for the bright side, even in all this uncertainty with companies going belly up. How does this affect you, a homeowner with an existing solar system? What happens to your solar system when the installer files for bankruptcy? In today's video, I want to dive deeper into the root causes of all of those issues and what it means for you. How can you protect your solar investment when the installer goes belly up? Let's get started. All right, just be smart and choose the installer that never goes out of business. Well, if it was that easy. <laughs> Well, and you know what's crazy is that Texas was actually a shining star of the solar industry for a while. We've had solar companies popping left and right. I mean, most roofers started selling solar. I personally was very, very worried about it. It was growing way too fast. Everyone and their mother was doing solar, whether they knew what they were doing or not, which was a problem. Inexperienced, hungry for money people selling something they don't understand. And let me guess, of course, most of them sold microinverters. I digress, I'm so sorry. Now you can watch a video of mine talking about why I would never put them on my own roof. After this one, I will link it at the end of this video and also in the description down below. So when those big players in the residential solar market started announcing that they were closing their doors, it hit the industry like a punch in the gut. And this isn't just a Texas thing. We're seeing this nationwide and worldwide. It all seems like it just started in California with the changes to their net metering policies, making solar simply not as attractive as it used to be, especially with no battery attached. Now, between those sky high interest rates, high financing dealer fees, which is another can of worms, and all those policy changes, the whole industry has been thrown for a loop. And those who weren't prepared simply did not survive. Take Titan Solar, for example. So what really went wrong with them was basically their business model which was and still is very similar across the industry. They built their whole business around outsourcing sales to third party dealers, a dealer model. These dealers, salespeople, 1099s, not even employees, were out there making promises that they were too good to be true, just trying to close deals. Oftentimes, they did not even live in the area that they would sell. They did not know the market, they did not know net metering policy, etc. They charged way more than ethically reasonable. Then, when the deal was sold, they would pass it to the EPC, Engineering, Procurement, and Construction. Of course, this led to tons of unhappy customer, a flood of complaints, and legal headaches. And to that, Titan's aggressive expansion plans and some pretty questionable financial decisions. Oh well, they were basically building a house of cards. They just grew too fast without having the solid foundation to back this up. And boom, Titan... Texas Solar, Pink Solar, Lumio, gosh, I mean, I even remember a situation at Earth Day, Texas, here in Dallas, these Lumio guys, nice guys, well, 
I asked them, so what kind of equipment are you guys selling? And they said this, well, the best, the best panel. So I will go, well, what kind of brand is it? Is it Maxion? Is it the sound power panels? And the guy goes, no, 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 it's Lumio panels. They're even better. They did not even know the equipment. Can you even imagine? Like they didn't even get trained. So this is the lies that they told the homeowners. Not only did they make a ton of money of a bunch of people, they promised lies ruined the industry that is so good. The solar industry now has a bad reputation because of those actions. And so the domino effect took place. Basically, I feel like we just killed the industry from the inside out. So plenty of solar companies closed their doors, leaving a lot of people with systems that they don't understand, some of them even unfinished. <sighs> Take a breath. <laughs> Enough of this venting situation. Let's review what you as the consumer can do to make sure that your solar investment, whether you're happy with it or not yet, is protected. What I can tell you is that the panels that you have on your roof, they generate clean energy and they can lower your bills as long as they're properly operational. So let's finally get right to it. Point number one. Let's start by getting all the documents you can, your solar contract and most importantly, solar permit. This second one may be a bit more difficult to find if your installer did not share it with you. However, your city should have a copy of it and so should your utility company. So call them and ask for a copy to be sent to you. This way you know what kind of equipment you have. Also, this will allow you to verify if your installer did their job and completed your utility interconnection, as well as its city permit and the inspection afterwards. At this stage, just gather data so you have all of this in one place. This will also be helpful if you ever decide to sell your home, you're gonna need all those documents. Point number two. Be preemptive, find a good local installer, read their reviews, check with them if they do annual system maintenance, how much do they charge for repairs, do some research. That way when there is a problem that comes up, you know exactly who to call. Also, you can check with them if they offer third-party monitoring of your system, that way you don't have to do that. If you find out that your system was never granted PTO, that permission to operate by your utility company or never passed a city inspection, a good reputable installer will be able to price this out for you as well and close out the project for you. If you are in the DFW area, Solar Time, my company does offer those services. Point number three. Know and understand your system. Make sure you have access to your online monitoring. If you don't know how to get it to work, you can either Google it, ask Claude, chat GPT, you can call the manufacturer of your inverter. Remember, not the panels, it's the inverter manufacturer that's the one that monitors the system. So if you have a Tesla Powerwall 3, it's the monitoring that you would have. If you have Enphase microinverters, your monitoring would be through Enphase, not the panels. You want to be able Able to reconnect your system if you ever lose your internet connection. It's not super complicated, but understanding it is very, very important. I think it's also a very good idea for a video. So if you would like one like that, like how to reconnect your monitoring system, let me know down in the comments what type of system you have, whether it's Enphase, SMA, Tygo. That way I'll know which one is the most common type and I'll start right there. Now, if you've never had access to your monitoring, which is also very common for installers not to even give you access to it, a local installer could easily help with that and get that going. In some cases, you have to transfer ownership from your ex-installer to a new installer, and oftentimes installers like myself will provide service like that or an orientation where they basically do a walkthrough of your system. They tell you what is what, etc. That is usually a small service, but you can also hire someone to do that for you. And point number four, call your manufacturers and make sure your system has all the warranties. Homeowners often don't know, but most of your warranties are actually with your system's manufacturer anyway. So like your Mission solar panels are covered by Mission, not your so-and-so installer, your solar cover under solar, etc. So call them and make sure that you are good. Maybe even they will recommend a good installer in your area. Point number five, 
Monitor your system on a monthly basis. Make sure you're on a good buyback plan. If you're in an area where you can select a company, like select one that has a good net metering policy, select one based on solar groups or forums. Also, you can call a reputable installer and ask for some recommendations. If you're in Dallas, you can call my company we can recommend some as well. Now, you have no idea how many services we do per week cleaning up after pseudo installers. But yes, if you have questions in DFW area, reach out to us and we can definitely help find a good buyback or even help with service, etc., with your system. And finally, point number six, this is not a super common, but some of the bigger installers uh, like Lumio or Pink Solar, they offered what's called a solar insurance Sure. So you can call them and verify if you have that policy available to you. You can also check if your contract includes it because it's normally put, purchased at the time of the installation. So this insurance policy provides warranty coverage for your solar system. And oftentimes they will look for like a certified installer in your area to perform fixes under the manufacturer warranty. Now, if you have that warranty or that insurance, please let me know down in the comments if you've actually had experience using Solar Insure or other companies like that. I was always very skeptical of those policies and I'm very curious if they're actually doing what they say they would. So I want to hear from you. Please let me know. All right. I think this concludes this video. If you stayed this long, thank you so, so much. Happy 2025. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. This month I am turning 30 years old. So if you click that subscribe button, this would be an amazing birthday gift for me. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of on this video. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.